Hi, my, my name is Mike Lofton. I'm the CEO of HomeWise, which has been um, working on increasing access to home ownership for 30 years in New Mexico. Also a non-resident fellow at the Urban Institute. And today we have a really special guest, Anthony Simpkins, who's the president and CEO of um, Neighborhood Housing Services of Chicago. They've done home ownership work for a very long time um, and has done a lot to, to uh, um, reinvest in, in uh, neighbor, troubled neighborhoods. Um, so what, what we're going to talk today about is what Anthony's work and the home, um, neighborhood housing services work to increase access to home ownership and revitalize neighborhoods. So Anthony, welcome. Hi, Mike. Uh, great to be with you. So, so you've you've um, uh, you're relatively new at, uh, at neighborhood housing services, but you're not new to Chicago, um, and, and and I think know it very well. Like. Tell us more about what you're doing to expand affordable housing opportunities, and and maybe you could shed a little light too on um, housing issues in Chicago, and you know how how are they how might they be different than other major cities in the country? Sure. Uh, well, thanks, Mike. Um, so just plug Neighborhood Housing Services of Chicago. We've been around for I think we're in our 46th year now, uh, working in. Um, uh, black and brown, low and moderate income neighborhoods across the cities, mostly south and west side. Um, for that entire time, we do home ownership. Um, we work on home ownership uh, through lending, through uh, real estate development, through housing counseling, uh, and neighborhood programming. So we're pretty comprehensive, um, very embedded in neighborhoods. Um, the residents actually are part of our governance. Um, and so, you know, it's important that. Um, you revitalize communities from within. That's sort of, um, you know, our philosophy. Um, Chicago in particular is, um, it's a high cost city, right? There are a number of cities across the country which are considered, you know, high cost cities like New York and San Francisco, Seattle, Denver, um, places like that. So um, housing costs in Chicago, uh, like many major metropolitan cities, is very high. So that's that's one issue. Second issue is that Chicago is, they call Chicago a city of neighborhoods. Chicago's uh, neighborhood, 77 communities are relatively segregated, um, both racially, ethnically, and economically. Um, so when you talk about the communities we serve, these are generally both low and moderate income communities and communities of color. Um, the cost of housing and generally the cost of living, but, but in particular the cost of housing, uh, continues to go up um, while necessarily people's wages and sort of the value of um, households uh, doesn't keep pace. So it's increasingly more expensive in Chicago uh, and more difficult to find affordable housing. So affordable housing is very important. Um, in Chicago, we have issues of displacement and there are really two issues of displacement in Chicago. There's sort of the classic gentrification where there's increased investment uh, and demographic change in neighborhoods. A lot of our um, uh, Latino communities uh, are in areas where they are seeing or at risk of gentrification. And then in many of our uh, African-American neighborhoods in Chicago, we've seen significant loss of population, but that's from disinvestment. Um, and so you sort of have two different cycles of displacement. Um, and so we work um, with communities to try and reverse that cycle. Yeah. And these are oftentimes we, we think of these things as two sides of the same coin, right? Disinvestment generally precedes um, gentrification. There's a relationship to those two things. Um, so you're working, you have to work on both because you have disinvested neighborhoods. Um, and you have gentrifying neighborhoods. So, so what kind of resources and policies do you need in place to be able to do your job effectively to um, improve opportunities in disinvested neighborhoods and stabilize neighborhoods and provide access to home ownership? But the, and the same thing within gentrifying neighborhoods. Sure. Well, um, it's really been a consistent issue from for decades and decades. Um, which is really access to the resources necessary to be able to be a homeowner, right? Homeownership is critically important for building generational wealth. Um, it has been the key driver for building generational wealth uh, since the end of the Second World War. Um, and there were policies put in place 
30 year fixed rate mortgages and FHA and other stuff to encourage that. Um, but access to um, mortgages uh, for people of color uh, and for other marginalized communities across the country, uh, there have been barriers to that. And so homeownership has not been accessible. So increasing, re re increasing access to resources that allow people to become homeowners, including mortgages, including um, community development corporations and CDFIs accessing the resources they need both to lend and to develop uh, home ownership and affordable home ownership units is is critically important. Those are that's those those are the primary issues. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you look at uh, the HUD budget, over seventy five percent of the HUD budget goes into rental programs. Um, that doesn't mean twenty five percent goes into home ownership programs. It means because a lot of the other twenty five percent is going to a lot of other things, right? So there's very little money, um, if any, dedicated to promoting home ownership. Um, in America, what, going for looking forward to like you know the next year or so, you know, do you see any opportunities on the horizon? You know, there's the Build Back Better bill that has some housing stuff in it. What's your what's your sense of, um, you know, what's your hope or or you know pessimism mm -hmm. about the the future? So, I mean, actually, to your point, I think that um, looking towards the future, the immediate future, I think that there has been uh, both on the federal level and on the local level, a, a uh, better understanding of the importance of homeownership. And I think there are going to be some increased resources uh, for homeownership um, and for affordable housing generally. Um, you know, we'll have to see um, what portions of Build Back Better um, survive and uh, eventually uh, get passed. Uh, but we know that there are resources in there specifically for CDFIs, um, and CDCs. Um, we know that um, originally as proposed, there was like five to $10 billion specifically for down payment assistance and for assistance for first generation home buyers. That's critically important. Um, the ability to uh, make a down payment is often a barrier for uh, right. low and moderate income people that aspire to be homeowners. So that's important. So there are some resources there, which means that policymakers and legislatures are beginning to focus some additional resources on home ownership and on the local level here in Chicago. Um, you know, the uh, Mayor Lightfoot's budget includes some significant increases in um, resources for um, affordable housing generally. Uh, right. And a good portion of that will be able to. Uh, be deployed for promoting home ownership and community development generally. So no, that, that's great. It's nice to see local government step up too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah so so is, I just have one other question for you that I'd like to dig into a little bit. It's like on the neighborhood revitalization um, front, which is, you know, a lot of Chicago neighborhoods are in need of that. A lot of neighborhoods across the country are disinvested and um, need, need help revitalizing. I've heard you talk before about kind of the unique role, the special role in home ownership um, can have and help and revitalize a neighborhood as opposed to some other stuff, like some rental development and that kind of stuff. Could you talk, share your thoughts about that more? I found them very interesting. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so homeownership is really critically important for a number of reasons. So we've already talked about the fact that, so these are disin disinvested communities, property values are undervalued. Um, you know, the average sort of wealth, and income generation of these households is depressed. Um, and so the wealth generating um, aspects of home ownership is really critically important. Um, but also the, the ability of home ownership in particular as a particular kind of affordable housing, that's different from sort of multifamily rental housing, uh, the particular um, way that home ownership allows wealth and um, money to continue to circulate within the same community as opposed to going out of the community, right? When people in apartment buildings are paying rent, um, that money is going to a landlord that doesn't live in the community or big affordable housing organization um, that's headquartered someplace else and staff live someplace else, property management, all of that stuff, right? 
uh, when a homeowner pays their mortgage, they're in, they're creating equity for themselves. So that wealth stays in the community. When you do home ownership, um, you also are circulating. You, you're 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 supporting small businesses in the neighborhood. Um, you you, um, you know contractors and landscapers and architects and brokers and um, and then the residents themselves obviously are supporting the small businesses they're populating the local schools um so it is really critical to um the revitalization of communities uh and it also promotes income diversity as well which is also critically important often many of our programs um that exist now um to promote community development and affordable housing do a wonderful job of that and uh create um, highly needed affordable housing units, but also can sometimes sort of perpetuate the concentration of very low income people all in one neighborhood. Uh, home ownership tends to promote more income diversity, which right. create, which promotes healthier, more vibrant neighborhoods. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's a well understood thing of how home ownership is a key driver of helping families um, accumulate some kind of wealth. Um, what's interesting about this perspective that you're that you've shared is that it also generates community wealth. Yes, um, it's not just individual families. So that's a it's a very powerful thing. Well, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate you taking time to do this, um, and let's do it again sometime. Absolutely, Mike. I love it. I think this is great, and this is a great way to help people understand uh, the importance of affordable housing and home ownership. Great. Thank you.